Um, do I have to be talking about what I'm doing? No. Uh, if you want. I'd rather talk about your bro. <laughs> sat and filmed me for eight hours, maybe you'd get a better sense of this process. I remember, uh, have you seen this Chris Ware documentary? No. A French company had done, or a Belgian company, I think, uh, Benoit Peter is this famous French cartoonist writer. He did a documentary of Chris Ware. Wow. And, and it's, it, it's painful. <laughs> Painfully slow to watch. Does he just cartoonist. like film them over one day? <laughs> uh, no, I think they I think they spent several days filming that documentary. It's pretty it's pretty intense. Yeah. But like watching someone ink is is incredibly tedious and painful. And sometimes it's much more fluid and expressive. Yeah. Than, mm -hmm. um, Depends on these borders. And actually, everything I have to ink today is not very expressive. And Oh, here's the boring computer part. I, I find from different reference books uh, some borders and I scan them. Uh, then I find, and, th and this, this page is pretty straightforward. But this one didn't take too much work. That was the border I had found. And then I uh, kind of cut and pasted it and resized it to fit the border on the page I'm working on today. <clears throat> in here. Alright, here we go. Oh. And I print out my little digital version. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, just pencil. I need to grab up my pencil as we're using now. <laughs> then I just start um, tracing away with pencil first. The original art that's going to be in the center of the page, there's some pages laying around here. Mm -hmm. You know, that takes about six hours to draw an ink, but then it'll be at least that long to do to do a border. This one has a pretty simple border, but the um, border takes, t you know, as long, if not longer, than the actual comics art. The ridiculous thing is that I, uh, sometimes I'll have ten, I've had up to ten pages in a row with the same border, and I'll redraw it each time for each page, 10 pages in a row. Jeez. That's the most crazy I've been. And, uh, and it, yeah, if I would not do it that way again, but I think especially when I started on the book, I was in this, I was kind of a crazy person. Yeah. So I think the sort of obsessive sort of folk art sensibility of sitting there and doing these patterns. Yeah, there is something meditative about it. And uh, I also, I mean, I said this at my Stumptown panel, and I don't know if people understood what I was saying, so maybe I shouldn't say it again, but I was like, you know, I'm trying to connect in a way to the artists I see in different parts of the world, you know, like in the Western and sort of uh, uh, whatever, America or whatever, the artist is upheld as something uh, special or mm -hmm. isolated, but wherever you go in the world, there's craftsmen and craftspeople mm -hmm. doing a really um, intense and ornamental and and uh, time-consuming work, yeah. and, uh, and without the ego attached. The, the, you know, classic book arts, you know, and I think a lot of cartoonists are obsessed with that sort of era of print and bookmaking when everything was really hands-on sort of process, especially here in Portland where we have the whole IPRC and this sort of uh, dedication to, like, letterpress and, you know, book binding, you know. I'm actually not that uh, interested in that kind of process. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I wasn't even very good at making mini comics because I didn't like making the constant trips to the you know, yeah. photocopier and then stapling things. Yeah. But I do, I love like all those old ornamental over the top book plates and you know, classic illustrations. So, especially in this era, yeah, related to the computer era too, of kind of rebelling against that. Like, yeah, I know I could make these patterns. I could just steal these patterns and run them through a photo, you know, like Photoshop filter. And they'd be done, so. Every set of blinds in this house is broken. 
They're like all falling apart under their own weight. Hopefully it stays. Okay. I'm just saying the brush is all safety pinned up here, clotheslined, so it can dry out. So I'll just say uh, Craig's now inking the borders. Yes, and now the... Um, well, if you sat and filmed me for eight hours, maybe you'd get a better sense of this process. Um, maybe it's worth noting, though, that I do kind of ink even stuff that I should not be inking with a brush. Mm. I do it with a brush. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure this would be much easier if I used a pen much quicker. Like watching someone ink is, is incredibly tedious and painful. And sometimes it's much more fluid and expressive. That a, I've never seen a brush like that that holds the ink like that. Um, I know, or, I put a, I just ripped this off a pen, like a, like hands. Uh -huh. And I just, whenever I have like, you know, old pens or something, I rip the grips off them so I can grip my brush better. Here. That's in the original? Yeah, and actually, I mean, this, this border, all these borders are relevant to the theme of the page. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I'm really curious where I, I scooped up this one, because, you know, it's, it's a little bit more rare to find this sort of representational art in, you know, Islamic uh, decoration. Mm -hmm. But I, at this point, I've I don't know where I stole a lot of these. And I often modify them so much mm -hmm. that... But uh, this was very relevant to this page because uh, the scene is of little um, young, Abra or young Abraham destroying his father's idols. His father was a sculptor of idols. So I thought it was appropriate that the border have some sort of representational sort of um, images in it too rather than pure ornamentation. It's be painful, painfully slow. And usually I'd be zoning out on some music or yeah. NPR or something too, so it definitely becomes a meditation. I think there's a, a lot of the Habibi pages are so much more uh, mathy mm -hmm. calculated compared to the blankets at least. Mm -hmm. Probably less fun to watch them be drawn. <laughs> is this working or should I yep. have something no, that's specifically good. set? I need to do some good borders. Yeah, yeah, these are some of the, the oversized pages from the books. And I was just digging up. Um, there's a lot of ornamental borders on different pages. Uh, and I was going to show you really quick how I. How I go about that tedious, ridiculous process of drawing the borders. Um, there's another. I'm like, man, I've got a gazillion borders. <laughs> but uh, there must be some of them are on smaller pages, I think. Ignatz Awards. It's a brick. And for blankets. It's a real brick. <laughs> it's tough to fly with that. <laughs> 